Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz. Happy Saturday to all watching today. Another detailed forecast update coming your way. We're going to be talking about a general weather forecast across much of the nation, but we will narrow it down to some specific thunderstorms that are expected to fire up across the Northern Territory, South Australia, New South Wales and Queensland. I'll give you a tropical forecast as well, and we'll also take a look at the heat that's extending across the nation at this time. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Your support is greatly appreciated. So we're going to start things off over just in the southeast of the nation. There's really not an awful lot going on right now. Some cooler temperatures, however, temperatures into the high uh, single digits or the low teens. There is a cold front heading for Tasmania right now that has just collided with the coastline. and That's bringing some light to moderate rainfall, which you can see now on the radar imagery. The rainfall there really not expected to amount to too much over the course of today, but we can see there are some strong winds being reported across parts of the state. Gale force winds on Matt Syker Island up at Gaffs Hill and also across to Low Rocky Point. Winds between 60 and 90 kilometres an hour. Also pretty strong on Hogan Island at Gale Force there and gusting up towards 90 kilometers an hour. So the winds will remain quite gusty over Tasmania throughout the course of today as some more rainfall moves over there. But that's about the most interesting winter weather that's going on. Some cooler temperatures across Victoria kept a little bit more milder around the coastline because of the winds and some of the cloud, but no rainfall expected over there. Same story with South Australia, apart from in the northeast of the state, where there are a few drops of rainfall expected throughout the course of today, especially around Moomba and then up towards Udindatta. They could be up to 5 millimetres out there as a cold front streams across the central parts of the nation. Now, this cold front here is dragging in a bit of a moisture band from the northern parts of the interior of the Northern Territory and Western Australia. This moisture band here is bringing a few light showers and falls around Alice Springs and that sort of area extending out towards Ayers Rock. There have been some falls up to 10 millimetres over the past couple of hours. Nothing too crazy is expected through there. And you can see here on the rainfall forecast, the rainfall will ease off throughout the morning and into the early afternoon and evening hours. Still a couple of drops between sort of three and five millimetres expected out into the deep interior of South Australia and across towards Birdsville and Moomba in Queensland and South Australia respectively. But again, at nothing too crazy expected there. The only real impact that this uh, cold front is going to be having in terms of weather impact is going to be the temperature drop that's going to be behind it. In fact, temperatures tonight are expected to go into the single digits for much of interior South Australia, New South Wales, and even parts of the Northern Territory as well. A really cold night again for this time of the year into the low teens or high single digits for parts of South Australia and into uh, parts of Queensland as well. The temperatures here look to be a couple of degrees below average. But apart from that, really nothing interesting is coming from this front. However, this rainfall does lead us very nicely on into the next part of the video, which is going to be those thunderstorms we have been talking about across New South Wales. Now, the East River has cancelled them from the forecast. They are still highlighting the chance of some showers late Wednesday night across some of the high peaks around Glen Innes uh, and Armadale, that sort of area. Maybe one or two of those showers could contain a thunderstorm or two. Uh, and then out towards Roma and Charleville in Queensland, there could be a few thunder showers here and there late Wednesday night. However, the big thunderstorm event that they were calling for by Thursday morning has been completely cancelled off the forecast. They will still be a few thunderstorms here and there as per the Eastman Bear forecast up in the Sunshine Coast of Queensland and even in towards Central Queensland out towards Emerald and Rolleston. However, it really looks like the all-out um, event that they were calling for across Central New South Wales has been cancelled and replaced with slightly more milder and much more pleasant weather conditions. Uh, weather conditions out there, which is a little bit unfortunate because I'm sure a lot of people were hanging on for some pretty good thunderstorm events out here, but in the wake of this uh, low pressure system and the high pressure system that's going to replace it, thunderstorms just won't have the chance to fire up. The Bureau of Meteorology, however, and the Axis G3 forecast model are still calling for this thunderstorm event along a trough line extending between Mount Isa down towards Tamworth. Now this thunderstorm event ending off in a low pressure system offshore from New South Wales, uh, Sydney specifically here, which will be dragging in that moisture along the trough offline it will be a significant event. I mean, you can see it here uh, Thursday afternoon into Thursday evening. Severe thunderstorms look possible from just this rainfall forecast alone across areas outside of Dubbo, Tamworth, even up towards Moree and Lightning Ridge. There is a chance of severe thunderstorms up here. So this is a very interesting forecast to have, and it really does show the uncertainty around this thunderstorm event. Only a couple of days out now. Uh, so again, this is a very hard forecast to make. Thunderstorms still look to be possible around the Sydney metro area into Thursday night and 
around Friday morning, especially into the um, east, uh, the western suburbs as well around Penrith, and then out towards Orange and Lithgow. There could be some thunderstorms there. Canberra as well, a neglected place in some of these videos. Also looks like they could be in for the chance of some thunderstorms, potentially severe, if the Access G3 forecast model does come to fruition. Now, the low-pressure system will move offshore early Friday morning, and with that, by f late Friday morning and early Friday afternoon, the thunderstorms will be dragged offshore. This system here does have a slim chance of developing into an east coast low rainmaker event sort of thing for the central to the northeast and New South Wales coastline. However, I wouldn't be betting the house on it as per this forecast here. It's a very slim chance, but I did think that I uh, should highlight it. Lord Howe Island could also receive some thunderstorms as well from this weather event as it moves out into the Tasman Sea Friday night into Saturday morning. Now, what's interesting about this weather event is that it's actually reciprocated between the GFS forecast model. Now, the GFS is a very reliable forecast model. And just take a look at the congruency between the Axis G3 and the GFS forecast model. It's almost neck and neck in terms of the rainfall up in the northern parts of New South Wales. You can forget about a reliable forecast across southern New South Wales and into Victoria by Wednesday or Thursday. The forecast models really just have no idea what they want down there. I'm betting a few showers in Victoria on Thursday, but again, I'm a very uncertain sell on that. Uh, but yeah, again, Axis G3 and GFS calling for a very similar weather event to pipe up in terms of how these thunderstorms do uh, sort of materialise by Thursday afternoon and into Thursday evening. The GFS keeps them a little bit more confined into the northeast of New South Wales, which I think is more reliable, especially for this time of the year. There's just going to be more energy and more available heat for the thunderstorms to use up into the northeast of New South Wales. Keep in mind, we're still talking about uh, early September here, so it is uh, quite rare to see severe thunderstorms even remotely outlined on the forecast, let alone expected by two major forecast models now. So I do reckon that the GFS is going to be the forecast model that really pans out here, but I've shown you the Eastern Blue F and the Axis G3 just to give you an idea of how uncertain the forecast is, so you really can't be taking anything seriously right now. Even the Bureau of Meteorology has no idea what they want from this forecast here. I think they uh, expected between 0 and 25 millimetres of rainfall in Armadale or something in that ballpark for Thursday, so they have no clue what they are expecting in terms of rainfall here. There is a massive amount of uncertainty regarding this weather event, so take this with a heavy pinch of salt. However, I would like to say at the end of this forecast, the chance of all-out mayhem in terms of dangerous severe thunderstorms is very low to zero for this weather event. If we do get severe thunderstorms, it'll be damaging winds and small hailstones, potentially heavy rainfall as well. I don't think it will be anything crazy. Even in a worst-case scenario, I don't think it'll be anything crazy. So this here just seems to be a thunderstorm event for uh, viewers and so forth, just uh, so you can watch and enjoy a bit of thunderstorm action in the early parts of spring in New South Wales. Certainly is not a concern at this time. However, with all severe thunderstorms, we do have to take the threat seriously. They can be nasty at times. These ones, however, look to be pretty tame if they do even go severe at this time, which is a massive uncertainty. We spent a lot of time uh, kind of waffling on what is actually a very difficult forecast to make. I would like to bring you over to the central parts of Australia. In replacement of what the Axis G3 has over in New South Wales, the Eastern Blue is calling for something over central Australia late next weekend and into early next fortnight, Monday and Tuesday, the 16th and 17th of September. A big shower slash storm event to develop along a trough line and a low pressure area over the northern parts of Western Australia and the Northern Territory by Monday afternoon here. I mean, just take a look at this. Some big thunderstorms are expected through the northern parts of the Northern Territory around sort of 10 and Creek and Elliot sort of area, extending down towards Alice Springs and even in towards South Australia as well, where some substantial rainfall could be reported as well. I mean, just take a look at the forecast here in terms of rainfall. Accumulations up to 50 millimetres expected into the central parts of the Northern Territory. In fact, some accumulations expected to be even higher than that. So some pretty decent rainfall is expected here, which is very interesting to see at this time of the year. Uh, this weather event here, I think, I don't think it's worth worrying about at this time. If you do live in the Northern parts of the Northern Territory, do not get your hopes up for some significant rainfall um, out in the central parts here. I don't think it's going to be happening because, I mean, take a look at this. There is no support from other forecast models whatsoever. The GFS does call for a little bit of a rainfall event sometime late next week into, or early next fortnight actually, into the southern parts of Queensland where we could be seeing some showers and storms across kind of the central parts of Queensland. So this, again, will be worth watching. Same thing with the Axis G3, expecting some thunderstorms out there. But the GFS is actually expecting some proper thunderstorms across 
across parts of southeastern Queensland by Monday and Tuesday next week. So again, we will watch this system closely. There is likely to be a rainfall event across either the Northern Territory or Queensland by early next week, Monday or Tuesday. I'll keep you posted on this and I'll definitely give you a more detailed update on it tomorrow, Tuesday or Wednesday. However, at this time, I wouldn't be betting the house on any kind of uh, forecast here coming to fruition. So we will move swiftly onwards. And just before I want to finish off with the Central Australia forecast, I'd like to just kind of include Western Australia as well. The heat really is starting to build across parts of Western Australia now, and it's apparent on the Perth forecast now. Not so much tonight. I mean, temperatures down towards air in the southeast of the state were down to minus one degree. It's probably going to be the last sub-zero day for quite a few locations uh, overnight, and the temperatures really do start to warm up now into the middle parts of next week. I mean, Wednesday, we're seeing this low-pressure trough extend down the West Australian coastline, and this West Coast trough is going to be bringing temperatures temperatures into the mid 20s or down towards Perth and into the high 20s and early 30s for the parts of the northern and the eastern wheat belt. Temperatures continue to warm up next Thursday and also into next Friday as well as this west coast trough uh, deepens a little bit. There should be a little bit of reprieve on Saturday and Sunday again as this west coast trough does weaken off slightly but it looks like temperatures are a hard sell into the mid 20s at this time or a hard forecast now into the mid 20s. It doesn't look like it's going to be changing now and into the early 30s of the northern parts of the wheat belt, the high 30s of parts of the gas coin and the Pilbara from now on and especially into the Kimberley the temperatures look hot from now on at this time which is great to see summer certainly is around the corner so for heat lovers and summer lovers this is a fantastic forecast indeed but for those like me who really don't want to see a return to the heat so quickly I am a little bit bummed out by this forecast I would like a more steady return to winter and in terms of rainfall as well for Western Australia we'll just zoom out and include the entire state at this time you can see there isn't too much expected over the next 10 days there will still be a few showers around the south coast here and there from these high pressure systems over the next couple of days but I mean it takes us until the later parts of next uh, week and into early next fortnight uh, I believe Monday and Tuesday to get our fur or another cold front coming through yeah Tuesday the 17th of September is going to be the next possible chance of a cold front for the southwest of Western Australia I truly think winter is over now on this forecast and I think we're definitely going to be moving into the spring and a pretty quick start to summer a very abrupt wind end to winter that's for sure and we're going to keep it on rainfall now and start talking about the tropics, especially into the top of far north Queensland. This is an interesting forecast now. And onshore flow is really starting to pipe up, and I'll get to that in just a second. But first, the rainfall accumulations over the next 10 days, above 100 millimetres once again. The rainfall really does look to be piling on now on the forecast. Reciprocated amongst the other forecast models as well, they're all supporting the chance of rainfall up in Queensland's far north. The Eastern Relief, of course, forecasting the most amount of rainfall, but I do find it to be the most reliable model in terms of rainfall as well. And and over the past two hours, this is the la latest satellite imagery across the Coral Sea and into Queensland. And just take a look at all this cloud now streaming into Queensland's central and far north coast. Uh, for locations between Mackay right up towards Thursday Island, you've got this patchy cloud now streaming in, and it extends all the way across the Pacific Islands. Now, this means that showers are on the way. They are an imminent thing on the forecast now, and it's going to be starting up from tonight and into early next week. You can see the showers really do pipe up from about Monday afternoon onwards. Showers still expected on Tuesday as well some more rainfall expected up there Wednesday. Showers continuing through Thursday, however, easing off Thursday evening and a little bit of reprieve into the weekend parts before Saturday morning. The showers do pipe up once again. You can see it here, slightly heavier Saturday afternoon before they do pipe down a little bit for Sunday. And doesn't look like a return to the shower or a, much, a little bit more of a dry phase into the early parts of next week, Monday and Tuesday, looking a little bit dry for Queensland's far north. But it looks like the rainfall is now steadily becoming a lot more widespread across Queensland's far north. I mean, Take a look at this on the rainfall accumulation map. There are showers expected down towards Townsville. Of course, the heaviest of the falls around Cardwell across to Tully, Innisfail and Babinda. Cairns expecting some rainfall as well, some heavier falls again in the Daintree rainforest area, but the falls extending right up towards Thursday Island and even for locations outside of Cooktown and Lockhart River, falls up to 50 millimetres are possible. So the rainfall now really starting to come quite widespread across Queensland's far north. Even some showers expected down towards Mackay, Proserpine and Ely Beach from this rainfall event and the onshore flow that's going to be coming. I do think that the rainfall, the wet season is certainly only a couple of days from technically breaking up in far north Queensland where that first 50 millimetres does fall. In fact, for some areas, it already has broken, uh, especially into the mountainous areas around sort of Belend and Kerr and Fishery Falls. There have been some big accumulations recorded over the past week there, up to about 70 millimetres. But I do think the true rainfall onset where we do start to see those really heavy uh, rainfalls come in where we're seeing three or 400 millimetres a week, I think they're still a couple of months away. It's just going to be steady showers from there. And unfortunately for far north Queensland, the chances of seeing a proper month without uh, any 
real rainfall up there look to be completely done now for the dry season. It looks like the rainfall is now on its way to pipe back up. And I mean, just take a look at this. Very rare that we see soil moisture values like this up in far north Queensland. I haven't seen them this high in nearly seven years of tracking the weather up in far north Queensland. It is very wet indeed. In fact, about three times wetter than average. And you can see it here on the soil uh, percentage map here. Soil moisture values up to 99, even 100% here, which means any further rainfall just immediately becomes runoff. Uh, so some concerning signs here, uh, especially in um, the fact that we're going to be seeing the real rainfall start to pipe up soon if the soil moisture values are hovering around 98 or 99% or even higher, then we're going to have some problems with flooding in the early parts of the wet season as well then when that real rainfall does start to kick in. And we also can't be ignoring some rainfall accumulations across the top end of the Northern Territory and even into the top end of the Kimberley in Western Australia. It looks like thunderstorms are going to start firing up by the middle parts of next week. Uh, Monday and Tuesday, the 16th and 17th of September, looks like the thunderstorms do start firing up there. Even the GFS now on board with some thunderstorms in the Axis G3, not so much on board, but it looks like with the associated low pressure systems, I mean, you can see it here on the forecast, Hector the Convector expected to kick itself off sometime next week. I do think that the onset of evening thunderstorms, evening pulse thunderstorms up in the north of the Northern Territory, Western Australia, and even parts of Queensland is just a few days away at this time before they really do start to kick off and become quite consistent. And you can see it here on the rainfall accumulation map, it falls now approaching 20 to 25 millimetres across parts of the Northern Territory and 15 millimetres across parts of the Kimberley. A drop in the ocean up there, but it just gives you an idea of the rainfall uh, and the fact that it is now pretty near to starting for parts of the tropical far north of Western Australia and the Northern Territory. And this is about a month or a month and a half early and about two weeks before I truly expected the thunderstorms to really start firing up. I was thinking early October, but now it looks to be uh, mid to late September. Anyway, so that is all that I have time for today. Thank you so much for watching the video to this point. Your support lately has been greatly appreciated. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, the, again, the support means so much here. Uh, a special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now, and I could not run this show without them. So again, thank you so much for all of them. Uh, their support, uh, I could not run this show without them, and it is much appreciated. But that is all for me today, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.